Elsewhere, uncontrolled development of high-rise apartments in Kilimani, Kileleshwa and Lavington areas in the capital Nairobi are exerting a strain on available amenities and may soon turn the areas into vertical slums if left unchecked. As NTV's Brian Mushiri reports, residents and original property owners say this has been occasioned by new trendy developers who are acting in total disregard of existing zoning bylaws, plot ratios, ground coverage and the environment. The capital city of Kenya, Nairobi, used to be regarded as the city under the sun, the capital city of Africa. Now, the city is a caricature of structures, a stark contrast of what it used to be back in the 70s and 80s. Kilimani, Kileleshwa, Lavington and Parklands used to be among the most prestigious addresses housing the elite dwellers of the city. They were out of reach for the middle class and the rest. The one-time leafy suburbs are now slowly transforming into concrete jungles of high-rise apartment blocks. The Nairobi City Council initially categorized these areas as Zone 4. Non-building permits were granted beyond the fourth floor limit. When all that changed, nobody seems to know. Buildings here now scale up to 20 floors, some of them towering buildings that had been built in the area as per the provision of initial bylaws. I am on a spot check to get a feel of the estates that once characterized high-end living in Nairobi. This is Kilimani. Developers here have erected blocks and blocks comprising of nearly 200 units onto an acre's piece of land. I am ushered into one of the houses just to get a feel of Kenya's affluent living. The host does not wish to speak on camera. He says the recent crop of developers are ruthless and do not hesitate to cause harm when they feel provoked. Furthermore, they are looking to buy him and his neighbors out in order to build another apartment block. Therefore, for the purposes of this story, we will call him Rishab. Here, Rishab and his family have to make do with natural sunlight only in their living room area. So picture this. You live in an apartment in Nairobi's Lavington, Kileleshwa, Kilimani, or even Parklands areas. Your apartment is worth some 10, 15, or 20 million Kenyan shillings. Now it's some minutes to 3 p.m. The sun is shining. Let me show you how that bedroom looks like, a study room, and even a bathroom. So this right here, is someone's bedroom at 3 p.m. This is one of their washrooms. This one as well is a washroom. And let me show you a study room or a working area of uh, some sorts in one of these houses in those areas that I've suggested. This is how it looks like. Let me show you something interesting as well. You see this right here. This is a wall to another 17-story building that's coming up. Have a look at this as well. This is another building coming up right next to this one. I moved into this area in 2018, six years back. Um, it was a pleasant area, clean air, um, we have Mutaiga Forest just across um, and um, I thought that would be, this is it, this will be my retirement place. Um, and then a few years down, gradually, uh, things started to turn. Uh, construction uh, development came up next door. I had bronchitis last year. It took the best part of six months for me to recover. Um, and um, I feel the quality of life has now gone, has, has reduced substantially. Um, so uh, the works seem to continue over on the weekend. City lawyer Alfred Namberi calls for a stop to what he terms as madness. County governments are given power, very good power, to ensure that anybody who commences 
development which is not approved, they must immediately take action. Which action is this? Give notice to that person to demolish the development he or she is undertaking and ensure that the land is restored to its original condition. Another matter that plays out is that some developers tend to construct different structures from what is originally approved. Each one of us as Kenyan citizens, we need to take individual responsibility, which includes reporting any incident, any activity which for you is suspicious, more so relating to, uh, for example, who is it who is, uh, who is making an attempt to engage or uh, commence construction on uh, the plot neighboring mine. Architects are well aware of this. We do have setbacks that are stipulated in the building code, 2.4 meters. Uh, you should take 2.4 meters from your boundary wall to the first light, uh, lit window that is being in light. And that gives you that distance from the neighbor's plot to your window which is bringing in light and that protects you so that whatever they do on the other side does not really affect what it is you're doing on your plot. Now what has happened is that people are building without architects, they are not following the building code. If you look at the responsibilities given to a planner, they have a responsibility to ensure that a place that is supposed to be developed is well planned, issues of uh, the, the master plan, the zoning is well taken care of, issues of uh, access because uh, you don't do building uh, uh, just for aesthetics, you don't do building just for, for show, but you do it for use. So and for it to be properly used, it needs to have adequate access. You also have issues of um, um, water, uh, whether uh, how the, 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 the waste water will be um, um, discharged from that building. Patrick Analo is the county chief officer in charge of urban development and planning. He also serves as the current county secretary in Nairobi County. Analo admits that there is a challenge that certainly needs to be addressed by the county government. However, Analo is quick to defend his boss, Governor Johnson Sakaja. According to the man, this is a challenge that cannot be squarely blamed on Sakaja. Other governors and county chiefs also bear a portion of the blame. It's not fair really to put a blame on one or two individuals. The governor does not sit in those meetings. Some of the structures you are seeing in these areas have taken two to three years to be completed. They were approved in, uh, in, in years back and I've given you the basis upon where some of those decisions have, were made. We take note of the concerns of resident associations from Kilimani, from Kileleshwa. Analo acknowledges the challenge that developers do construct something totally different from what they have been cleared for. We have um, a mechanism of addressing that. The city courts are coming back in order to help us prosecute illegalities around uh, the, the development control and the construction sector. As it stands, these areas have seen a decrease in value which experts and residents alike opine is a major concern. Apartments in this uh, block were selling for 20 million. Uh, now, if you're lucky, you can maybe fetch 15 million. And I know uh, people have started moving out, um, cashing up whatever they can. Uh, so yes, it's been uh, a loss of investment for them. Nairobi is projected to be a mega city by the year 2050 and experts say that it is unrealistic to expect these areas to remain as they were with Kileleshwa and Kilimani expected to follow global trends like that of Hong Kong where buildings continue to rise vertically to accommodate the growing human population. But at what cost? Brian Mushiri NTV Nairobi The monitor takes us to 